quilt box, quilt board, whatever you want to call it. Good for overwintering on your beehives. Screen bottom, fill it with shavings. We're going to build them. Show you how to do it. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. What I'm going to be making today are called, at least I call them quilt boards. There's a lot of different names for them. What this is, is a board that sits on top of the hive during the winter and is, in my case, I fill with wood shavings. And it absorbs moisture and prevents condensation from dripping back down on the bees. Uh, I usually put, well, I always put this right above the candy board, which has some uh, vents in it. And it allows everything to vent up through. The wood shavings absorb the moisture and it prevents condensation from coming back down. So how do I make them? Everybody makes them different. You ask uh, six beekeepers, you'll get seven different opinions. But I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, I use just regular 1x6. You could use a 1x4. I use 1x6. I like the extra depth. Uh, side pieces are 19 and an eighth. Of course, this is 5 and a half. And I bore four 1-inch holes in each side piece. And I'll show you why that is in a minute here. Your end pieces, and these are white because I had some leftover paint I needed to just use it up, so I painted a few of these. This is uh, 16 and a quarter long. On each end I've got a rabbit. This is 3 eighths of an inch deep and it is inset 3 quarters of an inch which allows this to set flush like that. The other thing you will need is um, I use aluminum screen or you could use galvanized screen. You could use 8 inch hardware cloth. Uh, don't use fiberglass screen though because the bees will chew holes in it. Um, Learned that the hard way before. And the other thing I use, and this is completely optional, I have this bag of uh, these stainless steel vents. Um, Amazon, 50 piece, it was cheap. Uh, these are 25 millimeter, and that just happens to fit perfectly into a one inch hole. And that's what I'll be using on the side. As an alternate, you could block these sides on the inside with a piece of screen uh, to keep mice and insects and especially mice, because mice find a way in and they find them wood shavings, they, they think they're in heaven, so you don't want to have that. Uh, to put this together, I'm using Tight Bond 3 glue and a glue bot. You don't have to have a glue bot, I just happen to like them. And inch and a half galvanized staples. And I'll get one put together here. I have an assembly board sitting here. It's a jig I use when I build my uh, supers or brood boxes. You don't have to have one of those. It just it makes it a little, uh, little bit easier. Now you supply glue on both of the rabbits. You can cut these either using a dadu set if you have one, or you can uh, Cut them with two passes on a table saw. Or you could use a router table. There's a lot of different ways you could do it. Normally I wouldn't flip that around, I would just spin it, but um, I got a bunch of crap on my table saw here, so it prevents me from doing that. It's important to get your glue spray and get a complete coverage. You get the best adhesion that way. I see some people just put a little squirt down and then think that's good enough, and it really isn't. You need to get it spread out real good. And if you get some squeeze out, that's a good thing.
Okay, the other thing I do is in the center on the bottom, uh, this is just a one by two. Uh, it's 14 and three quarter inches long. And that is to give the uh, screen a little bit of extra support so it doesn't sag. If you use an eighth inch hardware cloth, uh, which is quite a bit more stiff than aluminum screen, you probably wouldn't need to do this part. The past I've also used burlap at the bottom which also works. The problem I had was that uh, the beads would eventually chew holes in it. I get the air hose wrapped around my leg. That's good. So, you get done to look like this on the bottom, sides, top. Now I'll need to put some screen on the bottom. And I need to get ready for that. I need to get my staple gun. I didn't plan that out quite too good. Okay, I got my screen rolled out here. You could cut it to size ahead of time. I tend to do it afterwards. And then you'll also find that the uh, edge from the factory wasn't cut very straight. So I just leave some hang over the edge. I'm using uh, quarter inch staples. You don't have to have an electric staple gun. You can use a hand one just as well. And you want to try to keep the screen as taut as you can. I must have some really hard pine here because these staples aren't all set like they should. But got a tool for that. Keep your finger out of the way when you do it. Yeah, it's just some hard pine. Yeah, I'll get this approximate here. And then I go down through the center as well. And I just ran out of ammo. Now once you get it all stapled, make sure all the staples are down good. Normally I don't have a problem with these setting. There seems to be some hard pine here. And the next thing to do would be to trim off the excess. And you could do it with scissors, you could do it with snips. But I like to use a razor knife. I'll show you how that works here. Just take a razor knife and hopefully it's got a sharp blade in this one. I just hold this down. It trims off just like that. And my one side was factory side, so so then your bottom will look like this here. Now the next thing would be is to put these vents in, and I'm only going to stick these in temporarily until after I paint this. 
they just uh, pop right in there like that. And that'll keep the critters out. I got to do some sanding here to make that nice and level, but you kind of get the idea. If they don't fit tight, there are little bitty prongs on the side that you could take a tiny screwdriver and pop out and make them a little bit stronger. Uh, this side here is sanded a little better, as you can see. They'll fit nice and flush. Okay, the next thing is, what do you fill this with? Well, for starters, you don't want to fill it all the way up. You only want to fill it about half or maybe possibly two-thirds of the way. You definitely want to keep the level of the shavings below your vents. And you can either uh, go to the, uh, like the local pet store or farm supply store and you buy uh, wood shavings. Uh, people with hamsters, that's what they put in the bottom of the hamster gerbil guinea pig cages. They come in little uh, bales and works just fine. As for me, I, uh, since I have a planer here, I use my planer. Okay, I've got the top off of my uh, chip catcher that I use with the planer. That's what this big hose is over here rolled up. And I just got a big uh, garbage can full of these shavings here. This is mostly uh, oak, walnut, and hickory. Uh, if you've been planing treated wood, don't use any, don't use treated wood shavings. That's just not a good idea. But these are nice and dry and they'll absorb the moisture well. Now there's a little bit of dust in there, but uh, after I fill the box up, I give it a few shakes like this and any of the dust then comes out. I do that before I put it on the hive. So that's all there is to it. Uh, making a quilt board or quilt box or whatever you want to call it. And there's a whole lot of other names and I really don't know why it has the name quilt. Because you're not putting a quilt in it, of course. But uh, back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s when I was working with bees, uh, we made these. But instead of using wood shavings, we layered burlap back and forth inside and let that absorb the moisture. But you'd have to check it several times during the winter. And I will still check these during the winter if it gets to be uh, unusually humid. And it can be here in the Midwest. I mean, today it's the weather here is so unpredictable. We had, This is October the 20th. Yesterday we had a couple inches of snow. And that was on a Monday. This is Tuesday. On Thursday the forecast is for 80 degrees. So you just never know. And the winter time can swing all over the place too and up and down. And yeah, that leads to some moisture problems. Hence the use of these uh, quilt boxes. But with that said, if you got a little something out of this or found this useful, we appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. And of course, we're always looking for subscribers. And next to that subscribe button is a little bell. If you click that bell, you'll be notified when we post another video. Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop with my quilt box. See you on the next one.